Dinosaurs endured the worst day of their lives 69 million years ago. A cataclysmic asteroid strike brought to an end a rain that had lasted 180 million years. No one could have predicted the disaster. Dinosaurs stalked one another for almost 170 million years, munching on lush greens. On a typical late Cretaceous day, pterosaurs flew through the sky, mosasaurs splashed in the water and tiny mammals scurried through the forest. The world then abruptly transformed. A six-mile wide chunk of extraterrestrial rock slammed into what would later become Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. The shock was like a gunshot on a grand scale. A new Earth was born after that. What happened on the day the asteroid hit, though? After the dinosaurs died, what happened to the Earth? In the wake of a devastating asteroid strike, how did life on Earth manage to survive and thrive? Looking up at the sky 69 million years ago, you might have seen what appeared to be a star if you were standing in North America. However, after an hour or two of watching, the star would appear to have increased in brightness, even though it was stationary. Why? Because it was not a star, but an asteroid that was hurtling toward Earth at a speed of approximately 45,000 miles per hour. The asteroid struck 60 hours later. Suddenly, the air in front of the planet was compressed and violently heated, causing a supersonic shockwave. The asteroid collided with a shallow sea on what is now the Yucatan Peninsula. The Cretaceous Epoch ended at that point, and the Paleogene period began. It took less than two minutes for the asteroid, which was at least six miles wide, to gouge a crater about 18 miles deep and release 25 trillion metric tons of debris into the sky. It's like the sound of a pebble crashing into a pond, but on a much larger scale. A peak taller than Mount Everest briefly rose during the recovery of the Earth's crust. The energy released was equivalent to 1 billion Hiroshima bombs, but the explosion did not produce the characteristic mushroom cloud of a nuclear blast. Instead, the initial blast formed a rooster tail, a gigantic jet of molten material that exited the atmosphere, some of it fanning out over North America. Everything within a thousand miles was set on fire by the material, which was several times hotter than the surface of the sun. In addition, an inverted cone of melted rock known as tectites rose and covered the Western Hemisphere with countless red-hot glass blobs. A small fraction of the debris managed to escape Earth's gravitational pull and travelled in erratic orbits. Some of it made its way to other planets and moons over the course of billions of years. In the same way that asteroid impacts on Earth have unearthed shards of Mars on our planet, the debris on Mars eventually became scattered. On impact, the asteroid was completely destroyed. An incendiary plume of molten rock and gas rose about halfway to the moon before bursting into a pillar of glowing dust. According to computer models, the debris storm heated the atmosphere within 1,500 miles of ground zero, causing massive forest fires. All of India was engulfed by fire as the Earth's rotation brought the airborne material together on its opposite side. Measurements of the ash and soot layer that eventually covered the Earth indicate that fires ravaged about 70% of the world's forests. Meanwhile, massive tsunamis raged throughout the Gulf of Mexico, ripping apart coastlines and scraping up hundreds of feet of rock, bringing debris inland, then sucking it back out into deep water, creating jumbled deposits that oilmen occasionally uncover during deep-sea drilling. A raging inferno consumed Earth. Each ferrule was transformed into an incandescent torch by the friction of falling, quickly and dramatically heating the environment. Most dinosaurs and other terrestrial organisms could not have escaped it because they were not submerged in water or underground. Animals that were left out in the open for long periods may have succumbed to the intense heat, which was also enough to start wildfires in some areas. Much of the Cretaceous fauna, mostly on land, was wiped out in just a few hours. As if that wasn't bad enough, things got even worse as time went on. Those that had made it through the raging inferno now faced a new danger. 
For months, the impact and conflagration generated dust and soot obscured the planet's surface. Photosynthesis virtually ceased, resulting in the death of most plant life, the extinction of oceanic phytoplankton, and a consequent decrease in atmospheric oxygen levels. After the fires were put out, the Earth went into a deep freeze. Humanity was wiped out by the collapse of Earth's two primary food chains. After the Chicxulub impact, not only did dinosaurs go extinct, but in addition to the disappearance of 75% of life on the planet, flying reptiles like pterosaurs were also extinct. Although many creatures were killed at ground zero, the asteroid's mass extinction was most likely caused by what happened in the atmosphere following the impact. The carbon cycle came to a halt as more than 99.9% .9 of Earth's living organisms perished. The entire planet became poisonous. Carbon dioxide, 10 billion tons of methane, and 1 billion tons of carbon monoxide were released into the atmosphere by the asteroid's impact, which vaporized limestone layers. 10 trillion tons of sulfur compounds were released as a result of the impact. Sulfuric acid was created when sulfur and water combined to form sulfuric rain, which may have been strong enough to strip plants' leaves and leach nutrients from the soil. Plants fared better than animals during the Cretaceous extinction event because their seeds and pollen could withstand harsh conditions for a longer period. Flowering plants took over Earth after the extinction of the dinosaurs, continuing a trend that began during the Cretaceous and continues to this day. However, all land animals weighing more than 25 kilograms perished. Before the disaster, raccoon-sized animal species flocked to the site. Still, for the next 1,000 years, only a few hairy critters no bigger than 600-gram rats roamed a ferny environment devoid of flowering plants and their nutritious seeds and fruits. There were twice as many animal species roaming 100,000 years later, and they were back to raccoon size. Palm forests replaced the ferns and these critters scavenged for food there. It was a world ravaged to the core and was beginning to recover. What was once known as the Palm Period gave way to the Pecan Pie Period over the next 200,000 years, during which time walnut-like plants appeared. There was a threefold increase in mammal species, the largest of which weighed 25 kilograms, making it beaver-sized. Pea pod fossils discovered in North America date back 700,000 years, making them the oldest ever found on the continent. Protein-rich meals provided by pea and bean species from the protein bar period contributed to an increase in mammalian size and diversity during this period. Mammals weighing more than 50 kilograms were 100 times more numerous than those who survived the asteroid. We didn't start getting extremely big mammals until around 15 million years after the non-bird dinosaurs died out during the Oligocene epoch. Rhino-sized animals began to reappear about this time. The asteroid can't take all the blame for this, though. Earth was going through a period of climate change at the time of the crash landing, making life on our planet more difficult. There was significant volcanic activity in what is now central India, which, while unconnected to the asteroid impact, was producing issues of its own. The Deccan Traps are the resultant lava outcropping. For two million years, the Earth's atmosphere was filled with the gases emitted by massive eruptions, which significantly impacted the climate. Longer-term shifts were also evident. Continental drift and breakup resulted in larger oceans, which altered global ocean and atmospheric patterning. Climate and vegetation were also greatly impacted as a result of this. The final non-bird dinosaurs lived during a period of rapid environmental change that began millions of years before they died out. The asteroid impact was the straw that broke the camel's back. Several studies have found evidence that the fate of Earth's life could have been drastically altered if the impact had occurred somewhere else on the planet. This would have prevented the sun's heat and light from being obstructed had it fallen a few more minutes earlier as the asteroid would have landed in deeper water. A mass extinction would have been less likely if this had been done. If an asteroid hadn't wiped out the dinosaurs, we might still be able to see some creatures other than birds. 
Dinosaurs would have persisted a bit longer if not for that asteroid, but with modern birds, mammals and reptiles emerging, they might not have ruled as they once did. The toll is high, but the loss paved the way for the contemporary world to emerge. Dinosaurs are revered as symbols of success because of their long reign over the planet, but if they can be destroyed so fast and irreversibly, we could face the same fate. We are confronted with our own mortality and the question of what it might take for us to survive in the long term. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.